So everyone, hi, welcome to the Culinary Institute of America's virtual chat about the top 10 questions that adult and transfer students have. Firstly, if you are a veteran or a transfer student, um, someone who had a complete passion change and ready to jump right into the food industry, you are in the right place, I promise. Um, we are so excited that you joined us today, and we really hope you get plenty of the Culinary Institute of America's information that can help you make a decision on applying. So today's presenters is myself, Lindsay Felvecchio. Um, we also have Michael Brown and Susan Lavender joining us. We are all admissions counselors, and we are your team. We're here, us three are here for you throughout the entire application process, and really there to help you find your path to the CIA. Um, so I think we might as well just get right into it. Susan, if you are present, if you can turn on your your video, <laughs> there you come. Hi. I'm hey. just going to start it right off with us um, with question number 10. Susan, take the wheel. All right. Hey, everybody. We're really excited. Like Lindsay said, the three of us are the adult student team. So you are guaranteed to be working with one of us, most likely. Um, so question number 10 that we get, a, a big one, why should I attend CIA? Well, um, there are lots of reasons, so I couldn't just like stay on the slide and answer this question, so we've, we've created some additional slides for us to address some of the main points of why you should attend us and how we are differentiated. So um, we have an expert faculty base. We have over 150 um, chef instructors and academic instructors from all over the world. In fact, from 19 different countries currently at our New York campus. So our faculty members are not just, of course, certified master chefs and certified master bakers and certified master pastry chefs, but we have anthropologists, authors, chemists, marketers, scientists, nutritionists, wine and beverage experts, and many more, and they are all the very tippy top of their field. Now, I can speak to this personally too because my husband has been a faculty member in our American Bounty restaurant for 20 years, and he's a graduate. We have a lot of graduates that are teaching. Um, so you're really gonna have the best people to teach you. And <clears throat> one thing too is, you know, I'm, I'm always very personal, so I'm gonna interject some kind of personal things, but um, our instructors write the textbook that you're gonna be using. The college I went to for culinary, um, not CIA, they use CIA textbooks. My colleague, um, she went to, um, did a culinary program down south and they used our textbooks. So I think that really attests to people, even colleges that are, you know, competing against us, they think that we're the best. So I just really had to put that out there because that was very important to me. Another huge, huge piece of CIA. Um, well, one thing I'll talk about throughout this, but um, networking is the biggest, biggest takeaway from CIA besides the education and everything else. Um, we, part of this networking is, and also um, developing you as a student is having an, having an internship. So we call it extern externship, so you might kind of hear me <laughs> interchanging, but these are a great way to build your resume because we have students who may not have experience or have different experiences and career changers, but this will guarantee that you're getting time and extended amount of time in a kitchen real world. So we have over 2,000 sites around the world for you to pick from. Now, most colleges that I've, I've experienced when you do your internship, you're paying tuition and you're not getting paid and you might do multiple of them. Ours is 15 weeks in duration, so it's lengthy and you're getting lengthy exposure at one place so the employer really develops a bond with you and you with them, but you are not paying tuition. You are getting college credit and you're getting paid. So that is super important. So I'll give you an example too, like you can see these places here, but you know, there's 2,000 sites, but um, Disney World offer, or Walt Disney um, offers housing, meal plan, and pay. So there are other companies like Four Seasons and Ritz Carlton that can offer housing. There's also some seasonal internships that you can do, say like in Cape Cod, if you want that kind of environment, you can go to Hawaii, you can go to England, it runs the gamut. So, but although it is essentially a line cook in a baking position, um, there is diversity. So, you know, it's not just restaurants. We have Food Network, um, a lot of food media outlets and test kitchens and research and development kitchens like Hershey and all of that. So this is just going to be a wonderful, wonderful bonus for you as a student. Another major, major thing. We have the most powerful alumni network. We have over 50,000 graduates all over the world. So one piece of that quick I'm going to say is that we 
actually will connect you with these graduates. So let's say you want to move to Japan or Italy or Greece or China or France or Chicago or wherever you get the picture. We're going to connect you with jobs in those areas and we're going to connect you with alumni. So it's not just the internship and in that it's it's career services for life and alumni connections again the networking piece so you can see here you know we have representatives you know in brewmasters food styles a lot of tv personalities anthony bourdain was a grad iron chefs michael simon kat cora jeffrey zakarian they're all graduates so i mean that's just tv there's a lot more um and of course minnie chalon and amanda freitag they're both in food media and their restaurateurs but we have graduates um food trucks food writing you know that's another media outlet but uh, marketing advertising business entrepreneurs research and development hotels and resorts we encompass every aspect of the food service industry so not even just restaurants there are lots of segments I can't say it enough about the networking it's the biggest thing so I mentioned several things about this but one another key piece is that we have three career fairs every year Okay, and these are for alumni and for current students. So the career fair is a way for you to kind of feel out where you want to go on extern, maybe um, where you want to work in the future, learn about different companies and what they offer, different segments of the industry, again, besides restaurants. But our career fairs at each of them, we have over 140 leading companies recruiting our students. And so you know, this is not free for them. They have to pay and we have a long, long wait list for employers that want to recruit our students. So, um, yeah, it represents every segment of the industry. We, we on average, have about 2,000 students enrolled. So after one career fair, so the first day you can, you can set up your interviews for the second day. You can talk to everybody. It's set up like a, like a high school college fair, you know, with the booths and stuff like that. Um, so you can kind of network around and talk with everybody. Um, but we had again we have about 2000 students we had over 1800 interviews at one career fair that were set up for the second day so you can see how eager and thirsty these employers are and how much the students really take advantage of what we have to offer them so let's talk about where we are this is question number nine see all of that was question 10 so um question number nine where are the campuses So we are positioned in the U.S. Um, and, and globally um, to take advantage of the areas where we are, the best foodie areas of the world. So we have three domestic campuses and we have one degree bearing um, international campus, that's Singapore, of course. But so we're in Hyde Park. So just so you know, um, Hyde Park, New York, this is what you're seeing in the middle. Here's our main campus. That's what we're talking about today. Um, so we're really gearing all of our information toward Hyde Park. Okay, so we're in the beautiful Mid Hudson Valley, and within Hyde Park, we're about an hour and a half north of New York City. So if you go north of us, you're getting kind of rural. We are in a college town, we're suburban. If you go south of us, you get city. So you have this prime location. St. Helena, and we offer bachelor's and associate's degrees. The St. Helena, California campus is in the Napa Valley, and it's called Greystone, it's the old Christian Brothers Winery. And that's where we offer associate and bachelor's degrees. San Antonio, Texas, when we, this was our kind of our baby, when this, when San Antonio, it's been around a while though, but when San Antonio was constructed, it's in the old Pearl Brewery site. Um, the, the Riverwalk, which is a really big tourist destination in San Antonio, was extended to our campus because all of our campuses are huge tourist draws. So we're actually helping out the city of San Antonio and you know our students too. Um, Singapore, uh, this is for students who feed out of five polytechnic institutions in Singapore, so they're Singaporean students. That being said, um, among our campuses, so uh, we do have a location in Barcelona, not degree bearing, and a location in Italy. So you actually, as a bachelor student in New York, can um, transition through um, actually kind of do cross-cultural experiential learning. So you can spend a semester at a branch campus studying something specific. Okay, here is where the three of us come in. What is the best program for me? So we are admissions counselors, and that is our job is counseling. We don't get commission. We're a not-for-profit school. So this is not about, you know, us like money grubbing, getting you in, you know, just rolling you through like a cattle call. It, it's never going to be like that at CIA. So super quick before I move on, it's a good way for me to talk about our resources as a not-for-profit school. So you have us, your admissions counselor, to get you in. 
before you enroll, you'll have an enrollment manager to package financial aid and also to make sure your next steps are taken care of, like your deposit and all of that. When you're a student, you'll have your own financial planner, your own career services advisor for life, your own academic advisor. We have your own externship advisor. So we're a very different than anywhere else. We have um, a library learning commons for tutoring. Remember, we have about 2,000 students. We had over 51,000 visits for tutoring last year. So this is great because this allows you to maintain your financial aid with your GPA and maybe even bring it up and do very well. Okay, so now I'm ready to go into the curriculum. So the associate degrees are offered at all the campuses, the domestic campuses, and you will pick a core of either culinary or baking and pastry. You can't do both, there's not enough time in the day, okay? But there's crossover learning within them, okay? So you will learn about the other. Excuse me. So the associate degrees take 19 months and they consist of uh, 69 credits and 60 of those are in the kitchen. So to put this in perspective with my degree, with my bachelor's degree from the other college in culinary, I had maybe 15 credits in the kitchen. At CI, you get 60. So nobody can touch us in regards to that. We have 42 professional kitchens and bake shops and six public restaurants run by the students on campus. So we are our own little town and our own family and communities, but we're open for the public. So our bachelor's degrees encompass all of the 69 credits you so you'll have the core of culinary or baking, right? But we round that out with business academics and then specific academics, like any other bachelor's program too, kind of academics, but with a slant toward food. So we have food business management. Um, that's if you, super quick, I'm gonna give tiny examples. There's much more you can do with these degrees, but say you want to be an entrepreneur, you wanna own your own place, you wanna go work for a corporation or go corporate, you, um, this is a great degree for you. If you wanna go into marketing, purchasing, advertising, this is perfect. Applied Food Studies, that program, I always put it in my head, I don't, this is a word I made up, I guess. It has a heavy socioeconomic, ecological, and economical aspect behind it. So this is great if you're interested in sustainability and agriculture, global food policy, going into teaching at any capacity, not just culinary, but um, again, food historian. So this is a really wonderful degree if you're very interested in humanity of food and, and that kind of thing. Culinary science is super exciting to me um, and to the industry and to our students. We are the only college that offers a culinary science degree. Think about that for a second. So you're probably like, no, Susan, you're wrong because Cornell has food, you know, food science. Here's the difference. With a food science degree, or I've seen culinology bantered about, you know, with that kind of a degree, it's not kitchen related. You may not have a single kitchen class and you will not be cooking. So with ours, we're putting out an animal that's never existed before because we're putting out someone who understands food and understands science because you have 60 credits in the kitchen. So the, the uh, R&D, the research and development industry is just eating us up like crazy. So like Campbell's, m and Mars, Hershey, uh, Oh my gosh, Unilever, all kinds of organizations are really snapping up our culinary science graduates to work with their uh, research and development in all aspects, be it product development and testing or, um, yeah, okay. Hospitality, our hospitality program is extremely unique to other schools, just like our culinary science one is. The hospitality program has a culinary core. Of course, you take a baking class like you do in the associate degrees and the other bachelors, but it, for the most part, it's a culinary core, and it's 30 credits, so it's half. And that's because we want to allow you to gain more experience in exposure to, say, hotel management, um, catering, and event management, just sim the simplest way to put that, okay? Do I need experience? This is such a huge question too. I mean, these are all like the biggies. So um, this is question number seven, by the way. I know you see it there, but just want to iterate that. So the quick answer to this is you do not, we don't require you to have experience. In fact, I, you know, I'm close with the faculty, being my husband's faculty and everything. And um, it's, the faculty often say it's refreshing to have someone with that's a blank slate that has no experience. There's no bad habits you have to break. Not that other students would have that, but you, you get what I'm saying. I know you do. So, um, but we, that being said, we do have students who have a lot of experience. We have some with zero. We have some that are complete career changers, career advancers is what I'm trying to say. So 
rest easy. We're going to teach you everything you need to know. We're going to start with the fundamentals. No matter how much experience you have, you're starting from the fundamentals. You don't skip any classes. So you're all in it together. So here's where I personally come in. This is the turbo option. Okay. I wanted to talk about this because it's, it's something that will allow students who have been chefs before, you know, it has to be kitchen experience and a high volume production kitchens, um, uh, progressive experience, not just one position like prep cook, but you know, progressive experience in leadership. So if you have about three years or more post high school, heavy duty, high volume kitchen experience, call me or email me or text me because you could be eligible for transfer credit to get you out of a semester. Um, this will not apply to the hospitality program, but basically the, any of the other programs, any of the other campuses, this will apply. So the turbo option is transfer credit for life achievement, basically. It's transfer credit for the externship. So, um, you know, a lot of students who are eligible opt out of it because they really want the externship. They want to go to a Michelin starred property. They want to go to Hawaii and work, you know, but many students, they prefer speed as opposed to that networking prospect of the externship. So again, this is post high school. So if you're somebody who has experience while you're in high school, or if you have experience at like a community college or another program with kitchen classes, this will not apply to you because, you know, externs a line cook position. So it has to be like kitchen related in the industry. Okay. So I'm going to pass it on now. We talked about transfer credit with extern with through turbo. I'm going to pass it on over to Lindsay. Hi everyone. Um, thank you so much, Susan, for passing it along. And um, I just want to say again, thank you. And I see a lot of hands being raised. Um, please utilize the Q&A feature just because I can't take any questions right now, but right at the end, we'll be able to answer um, a lot of questions you might have. Um, so let's just start with this question. And let me tell you, I know these are biggies, but I get this question so frequently. Um, can I get transfer credit? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, you can absolutely receive transfer credit into the CIA, especially with a C or higher. Um, and this can also be credits that transfer into any one of our programs. So if you are at a community college or any college and you have specific GED courses that you would like to, um, the general ed courses that you would like to, you know, see if they transfer in, no problem. Um, we'll absolutely take whatever we can for you, which can absolutely shorten your length of time here. Just work with your counselor um, and we'll definitely be able to find the best uh, length of time, the best, best program for you. Which brings me to the bachelor's degree completion program. So since it is so common for students coming into the CIA with transfer credit, again, remember this is a very passion-based school. So a lot of people have made different life choices and went to previous colleges and decided that this is where they belong. This is so common for us that we actually created um, the bachelor's degree completion program. So what you can do is we're going to take a minimum of 32 credits and a max of 64 credits and we take them and we actually have you complete a bachelor's degree in either culinary arts or baking and pastry in an extremely short amount of time. Now everyone's different and everyone has different transcripts, everyone has different stories, so send me your transcripts and I will let you know the exact length of time you would be on campus and um, what classes transfer over. This also really works out nicely for students who do have transfer credit because the associate's degree program doesn't have a, the option of studying abroad and taking these culture trips that the CIA offers to bachelor's students only. But if you decide to do the completion program, it applies to you. Um, so I always like to stress that if, even if you have 32 credits, we'll take it because I, I really think this would benefit your experience at the CIA. Um, it, it's a really unique program and it's very molded to you personally and you know it really it's there for your previous education we recognize you have previous education we applaud it and now we want to get you into our kitchens and bake shops that's where the meat and potatoes is and we want to get you there no pun intended <laughs> so this is also a really interesting question because a lot of adult and transfer students they, you know, what is campus life like? Um, well, I know it's usually not in, in the mindset of an adult and transfer student. Usually they want to come in, get their education, and, you know, just leave. But at the CIA, it's almost just as important to utilize the campus life, um, you know, outside of the kitchen, let's say. 
We have clubs and organizations that are food and non-food related. Uh, we have a brewery club. Uh, we have hospitality club. We have, um, you know, local like farm clubs where they go and travel into the Hudson Valley up to local farms and um, see the different agriculture and uh, th those experiences. It's a lot of culture um, and a lot of really real world experiences just from our just from our campus, you know, that you'll be able to have. Um, we also have food competitions and we have cook-offs, of course. I mean, we're the CIA, why wouldn't we? And the student commons area, it isn't just a place to eat and some, have some tables and chairs. This is actually our, our brewery that's right on campus, which won Best Beer of 2019 in New York State, um, is right in the front entrance. So you walk into this beautiful glass brewery and you can watch um, Professor Hutch and him teaching the act of and the art of brewing beer. And then if you just go a little ahead, uh, there is an innovation kitchen, which is, um, it's a pop-up restaurant that's different each semester that is student run. So it's definitely interesting. It's not like a common uh, student commons at other colleges. I remember mine was just a, a food hall, but this is, it just holds so much more than that. Um, if you're interested in sports and fitness, we have that. We have five sports. We have basketball, tennis, soccer, cross country, and volleyball. We have intramurals, um, a weight room, a cardio room, a pool, and our gym, which is huge. Uh, I know Susan touched a little bit on the career, um, the career fair, um, but that's where it's held. The gym is massive, and it is the biggest event three times a year that is held right in our campus, right in the student commons. So. It's definitely important to utilize the campus life um, as much as you can, uh, especially if you're living on campus, which is kind of where we're going to go now. So Michael, who is an admissions counselor, a veteran, and a CIA alumni, he's going to take the wheel on this and talk about housing and all of the veteran uh, benefits that are available. So uh, Michael, take it away. Hi, Lens. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? We can absolutely hear you and we can see you. <laughs> okay, good, uh, because uh, I, I thought I was having a little bit of a technical difficulty, so I apologize. Uh, so the question is, can I live on campus? And the absolute answer is yes. All students are welcome to live on campus. In fact, when I was a student, uh, I lived on campus and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, one of the really cool things about housing at, at the CIA, we're on the banks of the Hudson River and uh, it's very bucolic, a beautiful, beautiful campus. So uh, you're in an idyllic setting when you're living on campus, and most of our students do live on campus. The really cool thing uh, that we do in terms of the overall campus uh, comfortability issue is we supply all of the uh, living accoutrements so that all the big pieces, you don't have to bring your bed, you don't have to bring any of that. You bring your sheets, you bring your pictures, you bring your TV, and you bring your fun things. Everything else is supplied by CIA free laundry facilities, free parking facilities, and we all have, uh, in terms of dorms, um, full kitchen so that whatever we uh, preach to you, you can go back and practice, which is pretty cool. I remember using it any number of times and having really, really a, a lot of fun and family dinners and stuff like that. So take advantage of all that. Uh, if you want to live on campus, you can. As they said all students are welcome to live on campus. Uh, we have several different types of housing options, uh, four residential uh, buildings, uh, six Adirondack style lodges, and of course townhouses. So it's spacious and comfortable living, your choice, and eventually you, you work your way through the system from one dorm to another uh, as you travel, maybe go on your internship, maybe come back. So you'll get to experience a lot of different things. Um, parking is free, and I love that one because <laughs> my previous college and university I went to, I paid every quarter for parking. So I'm, I'm probably seeing some head shake here without seeing them, right? Uh, if you've gone to college, you know what I'm talking about. There are uh, a, a lot of fees involved, and we have a lot of amenities, as I said, uh, that, that you just get by being on campus and being a student and living on campus. So probably about 80% um, of our students plus live on campus. So um, you know, that's a lot. But if you want to live off campus, you can. We don't offer family housing right now, but what I would say is utilize us as your resource. So Susan, myself, Lindsay, uh, we know the surrounding area. If you want to live off campus, you definitely can. Um, Craigslist, Google, research, do those types of things, and also uh, connect with our res residential life folks. Uh, they can help you as well. Plus, the website has some general information. So veterans, 
Uh, I'm proud to serve, and I'm also proud to uh, represent veterans on campus. So we offer a whole lot of amenities for veterans as well. We have a lot of support and services, which I know is very, very important. We're a military-designated school, uh, which means we've passed criteria set forth by the VA to work with veterans. We're Yellow Ribbon School as well, uh, post 9-11 and the various other GI benefit uh, bills that uh, have come through over the years. So we walk in all different areas. Um, the uh, variety of support and services ranges from working with the Red Cross and veterans and their uh, uh, clinic visits, uh, working with the, the actual VA benefits themselves, the certificate of eligibility. And of course, uh, if all of you don't know this, uh, I think one of the really cool things about the legacy of the school is the fact that we were founded on the premise Can I get financial aid? Big questions because today's college tuition, we want to make it affordable. We all know uh, in these times that it's very tough. College tuition uh, sometimes uh, looks like a big bear. Uh, but what we're trying to do with it is make it extremely affordable because all of our students receive first year aid. A lot of schools don't do that. Please do file FAFSA because if you file FAFSA, you're looked at for need and merit. And by the way, all students are automatically reviewed whether you file faster or not for merit aid, which I think is pretty cool as well. So you're eligible for, for federal and state aid, CIA grants and scholarships. And by the way, we did uh, probably about $28 million over the last year and a half in uh, delving out to our current students. So that's a lot of money that we've tried to help students make it affordable with. Um, we have specific grants and programs, so little things like uh, getting an alumni letter for a thousand dollar grant one time only, uh, getting your SATs or ACTs in. Uh, so you can build your financial aid portfolio, you'll have a dedicated manager, just like you'll have a dedicated counselor, a dedicated enrollment manager, somebody to help you with the financial aid end of things. So don't be afraid to go ahead and call them talk to us, talk about financial aid, and then of course, uh, let us evaluate you so that you don't evaluate yourself and say, I'm not gonna get anything. Definitely put that FAFSA in and let us look at you and help you make it affordable. Will I fit in? That's always a question I get from veteran students and uh, transfer students, adult students. Um, one of the things I would say to you, 50% uh, of our student body is just like you. They're career changers. They may have been college graduates. They may have one, two, or three years under their belt in, tr in terms of transfer credit. Uh, they may have worked in the industry. They may want to work in the industry. And the career changers, in particular, they're they're thinking, "Wow, I'm, I'm you know, I've ten years at a, a, another company, and uh, I don't." I want to live on campus. Am I going to be accepted? Yes, you are. If you're a foodie and you're passionate and you desire to learn, uh, you're going to be a part of a great community, a unique community that um, loves food. So if you're a foodie, you're going to be a part of that. You'll definitely fit in. And people like myself, Lindsay, Susan, and others are going to help you with that transition. How can I apply? Well, really, it's a three-step, easy, simple process. We're a member of Common App, of course, but we also have our application embedded on our website. Application, essay, letter of recommendation, and transcripts is what you need. Um, we can help you with that process because we're trying to make this a very simple process. So, essay, maybe you're a little, you know, reticent about writing. Talk to me. Talk to any one of the counselors. You can do a verbal option, which is pretty cool. You can answer the question verbally. Uh, the letter of recommendation, once again, get it from a CIA graduate. That's worth $1,000. That letter of recommendation can come from anybody except the family member. And it, most importantly, I think, uh, and for me as a, a veterans counselor, uh, the veterans do the certificate of eligibility and they have benefits, but they can also file FAFSA and you should file FAFSA as well, no matter who you are. Let us evaluate you. Do these three easy steps. We have fall coming, so that's open for application. And I would say to you, go ahead and apply, and we'll help you with that process. If fall doesn't work for you, let's go to spring 2021. We'll help you there as well. So I think what we're trying to do is make it easy, affordable, and, and, and let you know that um, you know coming into this industry, this school is dedicated to serving the industry. And if you become a part of that, uh, you can't help but be successful.
Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, awesome information. I feel like those 10 questions we get often. I mean, how much do we, you know, we get them. Uh, so it was really nice to be able to put that out there for you. Maybe those were 10 questions that you've been struggling with and just had no idea about the answer. But um, stick around because I do have a couple of questions in the Q&A. Uh, Michael and Susan, you can turn on your computer, uh, your, your, your microphone and your, um, your video because uh, we're going to go through these together. Um, Very good. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Let's start with, uh, so, so you've already answered this, Michael. Does parking cost for commuters? Well, it does not. Uh, it, it, I think that's a really cool amenity, an opportunity to park your car on campus if you have one, you want to bring it. Um, you know, as I said, when I was in college, I paid every quarter a couple hundred dollars to park and I had to walk a mile to get to, to my classes. So uh, with this, uh, you know, parking is free. You go to the safety office, you get your sticker. Uh, and you won't be walking three miles. I think they've done studies where it says anywhere from seven to 10 minutes will get you to your classroom. So I have a question here. Could you tell us more about the bachelor's in culinary science? What exactly is the content of this course? Susan, do you want to take that one over? Or sure. You can jump sure. In? You can actually view the course curriculum on the website. Um, <clears throat> if you go to the section that's a culinary science, you can go down and you can view it. And we have the online, um, excuse me, allergies, we have the online course catalog. So I'm not going to go into like nitty gritty detail, but um, so the culinary science program, a lot of people are like, you know, oh, this is molecular gastronomy. I mean, sure. But I mean, I can, I can give you some very simple examples because this is not my forte, like the actual, you know, science side of things. Um, they're working with properties of heat dynamics. They're working with um, fermentation. Um, they have a lot of uh, they set up down at the egg at the student commons and do different um, testing. So one of them that was really cool, one of our, one of my former students who's in the culinary science program asked if he could come to the admissions office and give us a little, you know, three comparison thing. And it was on, um, it was on tomato sauce. So it's simple, but there's chemical properties under this, right? So one of them, he didn't tell, he, he had to ask us like, what do you think is different? So one of them ended up being, was previously frozen. One was using fresh tomatoes and one was using canned. So it's not as simple as just us tasting that and being like, you know, oh, here's the difference. It's better to have it fresh, you know, or whatever. It was, he was actually looking at the chemical properties and how um, the treating of the tomatoes in the different ways uh, it, um, reacted with the integrity of the fruit. So the real chemistry behind the process. They work with crystallization and how that works. Um, they did one, I'll try not to go too long, but there was an experiment when the program was newer. I, I would go down there a lot just to kind of check it out um, to the lab. And um, they actually cultivated wild yeast off of like local raisins, fresh grapes, and some other fruit, apple. It was a local apple. So they didn't, they cultivated wild yeast off of that and put it in the little Petri dish or however they did it. And then um, they actually made bread with the three different yeasts to see how it turned out. Cause each strain was, wild yeast can have lots of different strains depending on where you are and what kind of fruit it is. Um, Cause it's in the air. Okay. So, um, and I know that I'm a certified wine professional through the California campus. So I'm, I'm familiar with that type of fermentation. But okay, I think I went too long on that. But hopefully that gives you a very simple but good idea. And again, these students a lot of times are going into product development. So they're working on product packaging. Say, um, you know, does the color blue turn people off? You know, they do a lot of these, well, these panels. So they're doing that on campus as well for our students to participate in. Okay, I'm cutting myself off. Okay, <laughs> so if you do have any more questions about culinary science, reach out to Susan, she's more than happy. Also, um, you know, we this is just from what we know. Imagine getting to talk to a culinary science student. We can definitely set that up with you, especially if you're into uh, interested in any of the programs. We can find students that are totally willing to chat with you guys about, you know, what it's like to be a CIA student in that specific program. So uh, we'll make sure we can definitely get you in contact with one. Well, I have another question. I'm sorry to interrupt, but quick, I've often connected people with um, Dean Russin, who is the kind of academic and science dean for, for the culinary science program. So we can connect you with deans as well. Everyone is open. We are, we are open to anything to the highest level. 
Yeah, we are. Um, so John asked a question, is it possible to work off campus during the semester? I can simply answer this as absolutely. Um, you are not chained to the campus. You can absolutely get a job off campus, especially because we have so many alumni just in the local area that are willing and ready and able and ready to support all CIA students coming in for an off-campus job. Um, and they, you know, that's probably ideal for you too because they know the rigorous program that you're going to be in. So they'll work with your schedule and they'll and they'll work with you. Um, so yes, there's absolutely options to work off campus. You can work on campus as well. We have plenty of jobs on campus here, but if you're looking to get off campus and um, get some more real world experience, Hudson Valley is ideal for it. It is so up and coming. Um, again, alumni are all around us. Uh, let's see here. So I have a question. Uh, is the associates and bachelor's degrees together and how many years are each? And, how, and do you guys have master's degrees? So I'll answer this really quickly, um, but then we'll let uh, someone else talk about the master's. In the associate's degree program, it's 19 months. And in the bachelor's degree program, it's 36 months. So that core you're going to get in either culinary arts or baking and pastry in the associate's degree is still going to be the same core you carry over in your bachelor's degree. So whatever you choose, that's the length of time you'll be here. Um, and yes, we do have master's degree programs. Uh, Michael, do you want to talk about the master's? Sure. Uh, our master's degree programs are uh, two, of course, wines management and then food business management, both 30 credit uh, programs, uh, food business management, two years and uh, the wines just under one. So, um, you know, there are residencies that you would partake in where you go to campus for a brief period of time. And if you're really interested in a master's degree um, with us, uh, you would contact Robert Tremblay, who's the coordinator for the master's degree programs. And of course, we can give you that information. You can also find it on our website. So that's the, the, the oversimplification of uh, the description, but uh, Robert can definitely give you more details uh, about both programs if you choose to go ahead and apply to those programs. And I'd like to add to that a little bit super fast. Um, and I'm not good at super fast, you can tell. Um, so the two year food business management um, master's degree is off campus, it is online. But as Michael said, you do have three residencies either at the New York or California campus that are about a week or so. Um, and then the wine management bachelor's only takes two semesters. So it's 30 weeks. That's unheard of for a master's like that's amazing so you will be at the california campus for the most part with some online options because of course you have to have the physicality of the tasting and everything perfect let's see here we have a couple questions so i'm kind of feeding through some of them are a little bit um you know specific so i'm answering them in uh typing wise do you have master's degrees okay so I don't see any more new questions coming in. And I think, I mean, the questions, the top 10 are, you know, were the main ones. A lot of people have questions about, um, uh, Chernell, if you want to maybe type a question, if you have one, I would love to answer your hand raised, but I can only see questions if you can type it in. Um, so what was I saying? Uh, basically the, the top 10 questions is what we get most often. That's why we made this presentation because we answer these all day, every day. So we figured if we have this out there, it can really open up a lot more specific questions, which is what I'm getting and that's awesome. And okay, so we don't have any other questions, but um, again, we're gonna be reaching out to you. Um, you know, and if you have our email addresses, uh, I'll, we'll say them out loud. Mine is Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, period. D-E-L-V-E-C-C-H-I-O at culinary.edu. Susan is S-U-S-A-N dot L-A-V-E-N-D-E-R at culinary.edu. And Michael is M-I-C-H-A-E-L dot B-R-O-W-N at culinary.edu. So if you have any questions, email us. We'll get your numbers. We'll connect and we can chat more. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to all of you. I'm, I really love all these questions already. So I know they're specific and I'm happy we were able to answer a lot of questions as well. Jameson, I can't wait to talk to you because that seems interesting. So we'll definitely connect um, after this meeting. And, and Jonathan, really quickly, and Susan's probably going to chime in on this one. Uh, the, the question was, can work experience only apply to your externship credit? It can't apply to classes. You're 100% correct. Um, I have people who've been executive chefs for 10 years. They still have to take fundamentals. You know, it's, it's because we want you to learn the CIA way. 
um, because you know we were the first culinary college in the U.S. and we we have standards. Actually, the industry uses our standards, so it's really we want to make sure that you're following and representing our education as a graduate. Um, but I'm really happy to talk with you more about that and about your experience um, and kind of elaborate on the specifics of every class so you can understand why it's important, okay? All right. Well, again, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Uh, Susan, Michael, and I love gushing about the CIA. We love um, talking about it and getting people, well, we love getting people on campus, but until then, this is how it will be for now, and um, we look forward to having another one of these. We'll invite you and hopefully answer more questions you might have. And reach out to us if you need it, okay? Michael, Susan, have a great Bye. day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Love you, everybody. Thank you for coming into our chat, and uh, thank you for attending. Yes. Bye, everyone.